Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Gary along with my wife Diane. We just want to thank you for being a part of our community. No matter where you call home, I believe you're connected with us and us to you. And so I want to give you a chance, an opportunity to give and to support this ministry. We're building a brand new church this year. It's going to be about 30,000 square feet. And, and so now is a great time to be a part of everything that we're doing. Our outreaches continue. We have four missionaries that we support full time. And so just a lot is happening here at Faith Fellowship. We continue to try to reach out and win as many people to Christ as we can. And God has led you to us and us to you. So I believe that you can be a partner with us and I would encourage you to do so. We're so excited and we want you to know that the permits have been turned in for our building and they are gonna be moving dirt with just in another month or two. So you're giving that you've been planning for our building fund, the harvest has come. It is time, we're ready to build and you guys have been a part of it and your support, continued support will be a great blessing to us. But get ready, it's about to get real. So I just wanna remind you how you can give. You can go to our website, faithfellowship.net or GaryHoffman.tv, hit the donate button and follow the prompts there. It's very simple, safe and secure. Also, you can text to give right there while you're watching. Just pull your phone out like my wife has. You can text in, uh, but we want you to feel safe and secure about all your giving and everything that you do. And remember, no gift is too small. Let God multiply it through people and he'll increase you as well. It's more about partnership and family. That's what I'm all about. So join the family, join the partnership and invest in the kingdom of God. Amen and amen. It's so good to have you this morning. I'm glad you joined with us. Uh, let me tell you what you can do with your offerings. Uh, you'll see a little slide in a moment and so when you're done watching it you can write that information down so when you're done watching it you can text in you can go to faithfellowship.net uh, and give there it'll tell you what to do we had an emergency board meeting this week and because our permits are about to be released and uh, we've decided to go forward with the dirt work uh, when that happens and so and that'll take three or four months just to do all the dirt work and so uh, it'll give us some time to see how everything is shaking out. Uh, but God is in control and we're not moved by fear. We're moved by faith and we're praying about wisdom. And so we're just glad that you're being a part of that. A uh, couple of things that we're praying about maybe for next week is having a drive in church, but don't do anything yet. We got to make sure that uh, the fear level uh, is either still rising or people are calming down a little bit and everything's getting a little bit more back to sense. But we'll make a decision about that. You'll hear about it. And so we'll let you know about that. But if not, we're going to continue to meet you right here as we are. Uh, and so we're excited to do it. And I'm praying about God and all the blessings he's going to do. Uh, we've opened up the church for some drive through prayer uh, from 10 to 1030. And so we need to get ready for that as well. But open your Bibles, if you would, this morning to 2 Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 3. And what's happening here, I'm just going to cut to the chase on some of these verses, but the New Testament said that the Old Testament was written for our learning, for our admonition, for our examples. And so what we see in the Old Testament the New Testament says, now watch these, watch these examples, learn from these examples. And here's one of them, what to do when you don't know what to do. Jehoshaphat is the king of Judah. Uh, three nations have joined together their armies to march against Judah. And Jehoshaphat is the king. And these, these numbers are insurmountable. It is like the earth shakes when these armies move. And so, what to do when you don't know what to do? And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together. Even though we look like we are not gathering together, in fact, we are gathering together. In the Spirit, online, however this is going out, we are gathering together. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord, and they came from all the cities of Judah, and they came to seek the Lord. What do you do when you don't know what to do? First, you need some spiritual leadership. 
I had a word, I call it a prophetic prayer, at the end of Wednesday night service about a releasing of the ministry offices and the voices. Just because I'm preaching does not mean I have a voice to you. But we need ministers that will rise up and people that will get in a position to receive the voice that God has sent to you. We need spiritual leadership. And one of the things that I thank God about is last Sunday, President Trump declared it a day of prayer. Thank God he sat in motion from the highest throne in our country. He opened a door and he asked America to pray. We cannot underestimate the power of that, as simple as it was, of him asking people to pray. Rather than closing the door on prayer, our highest official opened the door on prayer. And I I cannot underestimate that. Verse 12. Our God, he begins to pray, Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do. How many of you know, sometimes you think, that's not good leadership. Good leadership doesn't get up there and say we don't know what to do. It is good leadership that in a time of prayer, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Depends on what kind of leadership do you want. Do you want fake leadership, fake it till you make it? Or do you want somebody to lead you into the presence of God who has the answers? Problem is, man thinks they have the answers. And we know that God has the answers. Now watch the sequence of events here. We do not know what to do. Verse 13, Now all Judah with their little ones, their wives, their children stood before the Lord. And then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel. And it goes on. But I want you to know, until they fasted and prayed, the Spirit of God did not move. You want God to get serious? You get serious. I'm going to talk about fasting here in a minute. I think in the New Testament there is still fasting. But I think you need to be praying in the Holy Ghost. For all those people making fun of Pentecostals, one of these days you're going to understand if Jesus gave it to us, it is essential to us. You need that power to get in the Spirit. We still do not understand, and it still hurts my heart to see the American Christian move in as much fear as they have. I didn't say not have respect. I did not say not to have some wisdom. I did not say to have some other things. But we ought to have faith in God and not be motivated by fear. And it just hurts my heart that the American Christian does not know that we do not fight against flesh and blood. The war is not won in the natural, it is won in the spirit. And that's what we need to do, and I pray that I have a voice to you, it'll be won in the spirit. I'm not saying about distancing and different things like that and doing what we can in the natural, but my faith is not in six feet. What if somebody gets five feet, 11 inches? Five feet, ten inches. Where does your faith break down and where will it stand? You know, a lot of people keep talking about the blood, the blood, and the blood, and I believe in the blood. But do you really believe in it? Are you covered by the blood or aren't you? In the Old Testament, they mark their little, their, their uh, lintel there, the, the door jams and stuff. How many of you know how silly is that? Here, Jehoshaphat called for a fast and a prayer and he stood before them and he began to pray. Now here's what you think you do in the natural. Sharpen your spears, gather all the pitchforks, get all your axes in from the forest. How many of you know they were facing a real army, but the battle is not won on the battlefield, it is won in the spirit. They did go back into the battlefield and they sent the praise and worship team first. I want you to understand how non-military sense this makes because that's what God will do. And, and here's what fasting does. And again, I'm not just talking about fasting food. If I were some of you, I'd turn the TV off. But anyhow, um, here's what fasting does. It helps you get in the Spirit. Because when God speaks and He tells you to put the praise and worship team first, unless you're in the Spirit, you are, you're not going to do it. You won't obey it. You won't. Your flesh will rise up. Your mental, your mental will go crazy. You will not have the spiritual strength that you need. Fasting, praying, praying in the Holy Ghost, not praying in fear. 
praying in the Holy Ghost will put your spirit on top of your mental capacities. Praying in the Holy Ghost. If not, if you do not get this routine, if you do not get on top of your game, your mental will pin you every time. Your flesh will quake, your mind will go crazy, and boom, you're in the natural. You're in the natural. I want to read to you some, some more things here, but just the Spirit of God, I just, I just from Wednesday night about having a voice, we're entering into a season where there needs to be voices. And there needs to be voices that speak, and then we the people need to have a voice that will hear. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Revelation closes out. Hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Hearken unto the voice of God. And that's what I'm trying to bring to you today. What to do when you don't know what to do. Number one, get serious with God. And I'll just tell you right now, from 9-11 that happened, for two weeks people got serious, and then after that they went back to norm. We're going to find out, just as soon as all this stuff is lifted, and people in their homes are making these covenant with God, these vows. Oh, God, if you keep this virus away from me, I'll serve you. We'll find out. We'll find out. We'll find out. The churches ought to be more full than they ever have been. We'll find out. Make a vow to God and keep it. I said amen. Amen. I, I just sense in my spirit as we were praying this morning, just a couple of us praying, I began to think about 9-11, and I began to think I did a study right after 9-11, and I found out that several times in the Old Testament it said the land will vomit. This land can only take so much sin until it throws up. This land, see, we don't think it's, we think it's natural. It is not natural. It is spiritual. This land can only take so much sin until it vomits. And I believe we're seeing the beginning of shakings. We're beginning to see the end times come. And I don't know why Christians get nervous at the end times. If you get nervous, come stand by me. Because I am a tongue talker, believer, covered by the blood, sealed by the Holy Ghost. We ought to know who we are and what we are. The people ought to get nervous out there are the ones that don't know Christ. Or those whose faith is weak, then come, come, come in the name of Jesus and hear the word of God. Come from every quarter and hear the word of God. We're living in a time. We keep saying that we hope Jesus comes back. Well, I believe he is. And as he approaches, the signs will be there. The signs, sometimes when you're not feeling good, you can all of a sudden say, oh, 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 and you know a good throw-up is about to come. I mean, you can just, you can see the tremblings. You can see your, your body, you know your body, and you can tell, uh-oh, this, this thing's coming back up. I believe the earth is giving signs. And I believe it's also giving signs to what they'll do after the rapture. They'll say things like, a virus got them all. See, the the sign to one will be the excuse to the other. That when we're gone, they'll have a reason why we're gone. They'll have an explanation of why all these people left the earth. Of course, they won't mention Christ. They'll mention viruses and different things, what have you. They're not going to mention Jesus, I promise you that. Peter was put into prison, and it says this in Acts 12, Verse 5, Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer, serious prayer, was offered to God for him by the church. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping bound with two chains between two soldiers and the guards before the door. And now behold, an angel of the Lord. I want you to see a sequence here. When Jehoshaphat prayed, the Spirit of God came upon the prophet. When the church prayed, an angel showed up Uh, at midnight. Paul and Silas were in prison. They were beaten for preaching the gospel. At midnight, when you don't know what to do, what do you do? Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. Now I can tell you that their prayers were not fearful prayers because they sang hymns. You don't pray in fear and then begin to worship. It just just won't happen. 
They begin to pray. They begin to sing, God, I begin to pray. Pastor Josh, we've got to get a hum. And we began to sing in prison. Folks, I'm telling you, if you can't do this at noon, see, we're talking about midnight and noon. If you're not a worshiper at noon, you won't be at midnight. You won't have the strength. You won't have it. I promise you, you won't have it. You'll be huddled in a corner, crying, wondering what's going on. These practices, these church services that we have where I invite people to come up and worship, we're doing that at noon, sun, full blast. But it'll tell you what to do at midnight. These practices, these habits that we have been creating will speak to you in the time that you need it. That's why it's important for church to gather. Other than that, you have no, you have no example if you're out there alone, well, I'm a believer, but I'm out there alone. You won't know what to do at midnight. You won't know how to sing praises in the face of the storm. You won't know that your covenant of God and David marched out on the field and faced Goliath. The rest of them were paralyzed by fear. It's amazing. The whole Israeli army was paralyzed by fear over one man. And David who didn't watch the news. He didn't know how big he was. He didn't know how tall he was. He didn't know how much his armor weighed, which we are told. But he didn't know that. He was out in the field praising and singing God, watching the sheep, reminding himself of his covenant with God. He knew it was a spiritual warfare. When, when, when will the body of Christ understand these things are one in the Spirit and then defeated in the natural? I'm not saying there's some not, not some natural things. I'm not saying that. But you can fight all you want in the natural, but if you don't gain it in the Spirit, a virus could float in the air and come to you. It's one in the Spirit. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing praises to God. And the prisoners were listening. There has to be a boldness. There has to be some fortitude about it. You can't go around whispering about the blood. Do you believe in it or don't you believe in it? The prisoners were listening. They were making some noise. And I still go over that. And suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loosed. Man, if we could just get a few of us to shout the praises of God, it'll unlock doors for people close to us. See, I always told you, if you're afraid, stay, stay by me. I'm a tongue-talking word, sealed by the blood, covered. I'm just telling you things that you should be saying too. Yeah, stick by me, I know who I am. It sounds too much for some, I understand. But we need leadership in this time and this hour. Spiritual leadership. Declaring a fast. As we were worshiping there, fasting wasn't what I got. It was praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, what people have made fun of for years might end up being the number one thing. Jesus said, when I go away, I'll send him to you. A very promise from the Master himself. I'll send him to you. Not only to come upon me and be born again and renew my spirit, but out of my belly will flow rivers of living water. I call for a fast of praying in the Holy Ghost, not from it to it. Because here, here my, my brother and sister, if we don't learn how to get in the Spirit, when the darkness comes, you won't have the strength. Flesh and blood does not have the strength. Your body, I don't care how much pumping iron you've done, you're no match for the spirit world. 
your mental capacities blank out. That you're not mentally tough enough. What's fasting do? Get you in the spirit. That when God speaks, you'll have the strength to act on it. To, do, to put the praise and worship team first. If they weren't in the spirit, they would not have done that, I promise you. Couldn't. Wouldn't. Be scared to death. But when you get in the spirit, there is a realm of boldness that will flow from your spirit. Because the spirit of might. Oh, Holy Spirit, spirit of wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding, the fear of the Lord, and the spirit of might. Jesus said, I'd receive power when the Holy Spirit came upon me. I've got power. I've got power. Don't speak your fears. Speak your power. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, with me. You could just turn that boob tube off a little bit. Diane and I were watching a show the other night, just one of those fixer upper shows. And sure enough, they came on advertising a show about the virus. Just, I mean, just more shows about the virus. I understand there's something out there, and that's all I need to understand. Faith cometh by hearing. And if you keep hearing it, you'll have faith in the virus. But if you keep hearing the Word of God, you'll have faith in God. Simple as that. Faith cometh by hearing. Whatever you hear, you'll have faith in. That's why, that's why church attendance is so important. It's not just the fact that you're here, but faith cometh by hearing. And even though you think your faith is not growing, you're hearing the Word, you're hearing the Word, and you're hearing the Word. And when that seed, when that seed, when that harvest comes up, you'll be able to pluck it off and eat of that fruit. These seeds of faith, these seeds of the Word of God that we've been taught all these centuries are for a day like today. You'll either cower down or you'll stand up. And I'm not talking about just going out in public and being foolish. I'm not talking about that. You may be quarantined at home, but are you standing up in the Spirit or are you curled up? Where are you spiritually? Spiritually. Paul was one time on the verge of a ship, shipwreck. His boat was being tossed up and down uh, the sea. And I think there was 175 people, so that's, that's a pretty good boat back then even. 175 people, but notice this. What do you do when you don't know what to do? Acts 27, 21. But after long abstinence from food, Paul began to seek God. Paul began to get serious. See, when fasting comes, when you start to give up something to spend more time with God, you're getting serious. Anybody can throw up those nickel and dime prayers, but I'm talking about getting serious with God. But after long abstinence from food, Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and have not sailed from Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. Now I urge you to take heart. See, leadership. We need some spirit-led leadership. I pray it for America. For there shall be no loss among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of God. How many of you know God didn't show up until we got serious with God? For there stood by me this night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve. I love that. Do not be afraid, Paul. It's amazing. We always have to be told not to be afraid. Do not be afraid, Paul, for you must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Because one man knew how to get in the Spirit. He saved 174 other people. I'm not asking for everybody, but I'm asking for you to get in the Spirit. To be a leader. A leader to your family. A leader to your home. If you go to work tomorrow, many, many businesses are open. If you go to work tomorrow, be a spiritual leader. 
Don't help the conversations of fear. Help the conversation turn back to God. Pastor, I'm afraid you're going to I'll look strange. <laughs> you will. Because the world is full of unbelief. But they'll be drawn to the light. They'll be drawn to the light. If you don't shine, there's no drawing. You have to shine. You have to stand up. You have to be a leader. I guess that's the word for this morning. Be a leader. Be a spiritual leader. At some point, understand that this whole book is a spiritual book. And most of the time, we try to fight everything in the natural. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. And we do not war against flesh and blood but against principalities, powers, mights, and dominions. I speak to you now to be a leader. To find your spirit, man, and let him rise up and be everything that God created you to be. I got to go now because I'm going to go out in the parking lot and pray for people who may have come. Whether they have or not, I do not know. But I speak to you in the name of Jesus that if I have a voice in your life, calm down, everything is going to be all right. Start praising. Start worshiping. Start speaking your faith. Start speaking the love of God. Start speaking the covenant. And then believe in it. What Jesus said, out of the abundance is what you believe. Put a tape recorder on your mouth this week and you'll find out what you believe. Because out of the abundance, our mouth speaks. I call forth leaders in the homes, in the businesses, right now, in the name of Jesus. And don't discount yourself. The people who think they can do it are probably the very ones that can do it. It's in your mind, it's in your thoughts. It's stirring. You're the one. You're the one. Rise up and stand. I'll see you Wednesday night right here. Faith Fellowship. Happen, I, no, I, <laughs> online. Online, but we'll be right here, right back again with you. Online, Faith Fellowship cannot and will not be stopped. I prophesy that in the name of Jesus, and we're going to come out of this bigger, stronger, richer than we went into it. More healthy. What Satan caused for evil, God will turn to good. So I bless you in the name of the Lord, and I'll see you online Wednesday night at 7 Eastern.